aboard, all aboard. Tickets here, tickets here, right here. Yes, right fucking here. Oh, okay, yeah, you're in coach. Uh, enjoy it. So we got free apple cider in the back. <clears throat> Just check with uh, Gladys. Yeah, Gladys, she's... She's an old gal, you're gonna have to speak up, but uh, just check with her and you'll get your free slop. Tickets here, tickets here, right up. Step right up. We're gonna be talking about children of the corn today. Get on in, get on in. We got a schedule to keep, baby. Woo! All right. Close those doors, strap those belts, and let's talk about some terrible movies. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings and salutations, everyone. I'm your dark showman, your favorite MC, the captain. You may applaud. <laughs> there you go, that's much better. <laughs> well, it is a beautiful, rainy Spokane afternoon. I got some jazz playing in the background. Hopefully, that's not too much of a uh, distraction. So, Howdy everyone, greetings from the Clock Tower Gentleman. Remember, that's how you find my channel these days, at the Clock Tower Gentleman. One word, and it will bring you to some asshole named the Captain. <laughs> um, well, I initially did uh, Children of the Corn uh, triple feature. Uh, way back in one of the first renditions of this on and off again podcast. <laughs> the Captain's cast, baby. You know uh, why we're here. Um, I tried to get through more Children of the Corn in succession. You know, in order. I watched a couple with David Near, And we said, okay, we're going to watch these. And we're going to do a podcast about it here on my channel at the Clock Tower. Gentlemen, that was months ago. <laughs> and it's not his fault. It's not really my fault. It was just, there wasn't much to talk about. I mean, there's a couple in like the, what, 30? Is it fucking 30? It's got to be close. 30 fucking um, Children of the Corn movies. There's only like five good ones. Maybe that's even a stretch. There's not a lot. Uh, those first couple sequels from the 80s are probably the most inventive. I mean, you have one which really cranks up the demonic element for Children of the Corn. It really goes more of the Christian evil, you know, the Christian devil and such. Uh, and that third one, <laughs> it's like Children of the Corn, like in the ghetto. That was my memory of it. And I fucking loved it. It was great. It was fun. It was silly. It was over the top. <clears throat> and we even got a Lovecraftian corn creature. We finally see he who hides behind the rose uh, in... That third corn movie. I think it was called Children of the Corn Urban Harvest. Probably like one of the best out of the series, if not the best. <laughs> you know? Because let, let's, before we go into more Children of the Corn, um, and again, apologies, me and David, uh, David Near of YouTube fame, never got back to what we wanted to do. But it was because there just wasn't much to talk about, man. The three... After the first three, uh, yeah, glad we covered it, but let's go to, to, to the basics here. Children of the Corn 1, written by Stephen King, you know, that's what the movie is based off of, a Stephen King property, and uh, it holds its own. I, I've, I watch it every couple years, you know, there's a couple classic moments, um, but besides that, I wouldn't say, I'd almost say it's not a true horror classic. And I mean that like it's a memorable footnote. You know, it's not Pet Cemetery. It's not The Shining. It's not, you know, one of the most remembered Stephen King works. The title, Children of the Corn, though, that's extremely recognizable. The title alone away from the story or the movie, has really transcended into pop culture. You have podcasts nodding that title. You have musicians. Uh, you have movies. I, I mean, for better or worse, it's all led to the terrible movie on streaming, uh, Sharks of the Corn. And, and that is truly evil. Oh, Patrick. 
Oh, Capitan, are you saying it's such a scary horror movie, it's evil? Uh, no, I'm saying it's such fucking trash, Sharks of the Corn, uh, that in itself, uh, I felt like defeated by it, you know? <laughs> so that is truly evil, a shitty movie. I know a thing or two about those here. Um... So Children of the Corn itself has kind of transcended into pop culture, but the movies themselves, not great, you know? There really is only a handful that are good. Uh, when, you, when you think of number one, you think of uh, Isaac, the creepy little boy, you know, or man-child, and then you think of uh, Outlander, Outlander, Zoolander, Mothman. <laughs> Slight deep cut there for any of you Strange Brew Reviews fans. Uh, but uh, there's not a lot to it. It's not a bad horror movie, but I would just say it's, it's a memorable footnote. The original Children of the Corn isn't like some monument to film. It's okay, you know? It's got some good acting. The kids are acting their hearts out. I think because they were maybe having fun... You goddamn directors, <laughs> remember to have some fucking fun. Uh, and I mean, when you're a kid, that's what stimulates you, man, is having fun. So I imagine if, if you could take a director like the original Children of the Corn um, and get him to work on something, you know, more like the Goonies or Stranger Things or something, he'd succeed in that because he seems like he's uh, an a, a actor's director. And... Uh, I mean, kids in movies, it's such hit and miss. You know, you can have uh, a wonderful, memorable, classic performance like Danny Lloyd as Danny Torrance and uh, Stanley Kubrick Shining. Or you can be like the kid uh, in the Shining miniseries, <laughs> you know, which, uh, God, you know, no fault to his own, you know. Being a kid is hard enough, acting is hard enough, but Jesus Christ, shut your mouth, kid. Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> anyway, what we're here to discuss are two more Children of the Corn movies, and from my understanding is they were both reboots, um, but I think only one is a true reboot. Uh, the other is... Well, the other we'll discuss later. <laughs> um, so, here we go, folks. Welcome to my fucking nightmare. I'm the captain, and we're going to talk about Children of the Corn Genesis and the remake of Children of the Corn. I was in a, <clears throat> a grocery store the other day, and <laughs> I heard uh, this old man tell his daughter, granddaughter, whoever... Like, he just gave me the side eye. I'm someone who's become uh, very aware when someone is staring at me or trying not to stare at me. You, you know, you pick it up pretty easily. So this old man is with his daughter, granddaughter, whatever, and, and he just gets, gets real close to her, and I just hear him go, Is that a Count Olaf? You know, <laughs> real raspy voice. Is that, is that, is that a Count Olaf? And I, <laughs> and I just had to fucking chuckle because, because yeah, Count Olaf is a character. He is the villain from Lemmy Snicket, a series of unfortunate events. But he didn't phrase it like, hey, that guy looks like Count Olaf. Or, hey, I'm getting Jim Carrey vibes. Or, you know, something along those lines. No, he phrased it like they were a species. <laughs> he said, hey. Is that a Count Olaf, you know? Like, there's many Count Olafs, and I just... <laughs> I had to share that before I forget, because I think I'm going to weave that into the Strange Brew Reviews lore. You know, when they, what species is the captain? It must be one of those Count Olafs. <laughs> Children of the Corn Genesis. We know we're in trouble when we hear Genesis. Seriously, look up most horror movies with Genesis in the title, and it's a big red flag to say, Hey, idiot, you're wasting your time watching this. Watch something else. Anything else. Um, seriously, 
This was hard to get through. Holy shit. Like, this was... <laughs> this was a slog, man. This was not fun. Uh, now, it did get uh, one mentionable thing is they did get some horror royalty, really genre royalty in general, by getting Billy Drago. When you get Billy Drago, you know what you get, you know? Um, he is just always uh, top of his game, even in something as fucking terrible as this, Children of the Corn, Genesis. Um, so that's like the one positive thing. I think most of my review on this is going to be on the negative. I mean, guys, guys, I have been in fights more fun than this. I have been in fights getting my ass kicked, and it was more fun than this. Uh, what's to say? This is just generic sci-fi channel levels of, hey, we have a property. I like money. Do you like money? Okay, well, let's use this property, and we'll make monies like Christ. You know, you get, you get your teeth pulled. You get your fucking teeth pulled and probably get some low level of excitement more than this fucking film. Uh, it starts out with an okay opening. A soldier is coming home from, um, from his duty, from his time in war, whatever. And big Victorian house and kids are playing somewhat near him doing a, a jump rope. Very horror cliche. They had to put it in all the Freddies, you know. Uh, and the dude walks in and there's, you know... Obviously, there was going to be some type of party, some type of celebration that our boy is home. Home from the war, Ma, he says. Bring him inside, get him some warm beer and a pretzel. This man just fought for America. Well, he comes to find that his parents and who whatever adults were around have been killed. And uh, then he quickly himself gets killed by a creepy little girl. Cue horror music and title. Bum, 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 bum. And then the rest of the movie happens. Now, I said earlier, you know, like, just, just, just a moment earlier. You know, oh, Billy Drago's the only good thing. Now that opening's all right. It's not great, but it's all right. So look at that. Me being the optimist. We're all fucked. <laughs> So, these assholes are sitting in the middle of the fucking desert road. A couple, young couple, 20s probably. Sitting in the middle of the fucking road, and they're sitting there long enough. It pans out, you see they have a car. And my first thought is like, if they get hit right now, I mean... Don't sit in the middle of the fucking road. I don't care if you're on a desert goddamn island, and there happens to be just one road on that goddamn desert island... Don't sit in the road. It's just begging, hey, life, please end. These are our main characters, folks. Man, I bet they're going to make some great decisions. <laughs> Fuck. Now, of course, try to pull some sympathy. Uh, the young woman is Pregos. She's Pregos sitting in the middle of the fucking road. And uh, her uh, soon-to-be husband, boyfriend, whatever the fuck, is like, oh, well, I guess we're stranded. Hey, instead of sitting in the fucking road, how about we go wander off and see if anyone's around? So they do that. They find Billy Drago in a creepy little shack. And then they stay the night. And then eventually they leave. And then they die. It's... <laughs> Children of the Corn Genesis, watch two assholes sit in a road. Will they get hit? Unfortunately not. Just when you think that the opening was okay. It's Children of the Corn Genesis. There's Billy Drago. Moving on, our two heroes leave the creepy little shack unscathed. Then they get, like, some stupid shit where it's trying to rip off the Final Destination movies. 
Fuck yeah, Children of the Corn Genesis really does it for me. I came twice. <laughs> oh, I just cannot <laughs> tell you the levels of boredom. Like, it was really hard not to grab that old cellular and look up funny cat videos on Instagram. Christ. Like, you know, just picking up the phone itself was more, more, more of a thrill ride than this fucking movie. I mean, it's just, it's crap, man. I mean, I think the actors all do fine, you know, but, I mean, it's barely a Children of the Corn movie. It has nothing, nothing holding it really to, uh, I guess, any of the established Children of the Corn lore. Um, yeah. Children of the Corn Genesis. Should you watch it? Um, no. No, you shouldn't. Two stars out of five. And you all might be wondering, wow, I really laid it into that film. Two stars? This isn't a one -er. It's basically a one -er, But it's acted okay and shot well. It acts like a movie. It's just a very boring one. So two. Two tiny top hats out of five. God damn it. Let's move on to a somewhat better film. But first, a word from our sponsor. But <laughs> he's heading for Woolworth and Woolco to get set for Halloween. There's costumes of TV favorites like Wonder Woman and the Hulk. There's popular characters from Star Wars, and there's superheroes like Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, and many more at bare bones prices, two thirty-eight to four seventeen. And there's spook sticks, face pops, hollow witches, wrapped candy of every kind, all at the favorite Halloween haunts. Woolworth and Wool Co. This Halloween, capture your ghosts and goblins on genuine Kodak film from Thrifty. Whether it's print, slide, or movie film, Kodak is the choice of professionals. Thrifty carries a full line of Kodak film, including C12624 exposure, C110 and C135 24 exposure in regular and high-speed print film, KR135 36 exposure slide film, and Super 8 movie film. Remember, the sharper you want your memories, the more you need Kodak film and Thrifty. Now, I could have sworn that there has been a couple Children of the Corn remakes, and maybe there has been. I tried looking through this list to figure it out, and I kind of thought that's what uh, Genesis was. I thought it was a soft reboot or a straight-up remake, but it, but it wasn't, not really. Um, it barely was anything related to Children of the Corn. But uh, this one that just came out a couple years ago, this one just titled Children of the Corn. I think it was 2020. Uh, this is a remake. And by God, after the shit pile that was Genesis, this was at least a film. <laughs> it had a beginning, middle, and end. It had setups and it had payoffs. And it had acting that wasn't the worst in the world. I have heard just tidbits of people's thoughts on this one. And to my surprise, most people hated this. Now, I could see really not enjoying this much in a lineup of much better films. Like, what did we watch tonight? Ah, we're going to watch The Exorcist Part 3, uh, Chucky 2, and then we'll finish it with Children of the Corn, the remake. Sure, if you compare it to other horror films, it's not going to grab you that much, I don't think. But on its own, yeah, I was surprised. Children of the Corn, this new remake, is not the worst in the series. Now, again, you have to fall pretty fucking far to be the worst in this series. It's not as bad as Amityville. But it's still a series that's just, you know, there's a couple decent ones here and there, and it's usually just decent. It's never great. It's just average, maybe. <laughs> you know, slightly below. 
But this remake had characters that I did enjoy watching. It had acting that I thought was better than some of the other entries. Uh, I mean, it's basically just a retweaked telling of that first Children of the Corn. You know, it's about this uh, town, and it's dying, and it's the children kind of versus the adults, and then there's He Who Walks Behind the Rose, which, throwing back here in my sea of hatred for Children of the Corn, Genesis, I did forget to mention, at least Genesis called the entity by the right name. It's always been... He who walks behind the rose. Now in this remake, it's just he who walks. <laughs> so uh, you're telling me anyone who can fucking walk? <laughs> it leaves it very vague, but he who walks behind the rose. Maybe a little more wordy, but it gets the job fucking done. Uh, you do have this entity, he who walks. And it's done pretty well. Until you get towards the end, and they're like, we're going to show the monster. <laughs> oh, oh my. We're talking CGI that's, uh, oh, that even if you had on YouTube, you'd be like, eh, YouTubers can do better than this. <laughs> you know, I mean, goddamn, it looks like Groot, uh, which my buddy David Neer pointed out. Uh, it looks like fucking group, just, you know, a seven foot version with really bad CGI. I would have much preferred a good practical puppet, a good, you know, effect, something we can really grasp and see on the actual film like they did in Children of the Corn, Urban Harvest. You know, if you're going to sell a monster and you're an independent horror, I... I beg you, do a practical, and if you absolutely have to, mix it with CGI. Because you watch these movies every once in a while um, with this kind of level of filmmaking where it's like, hey, you know what, this is kind of watchable. And you do something like that, and you lose the old school horror fans because we don't want to see this your fucking five cent CGI. We want to see you actually try to be an artist. Um, and these, you know, kids today, they don't want to fucking see that because they have been exposed to 80s and 90s films and back and, and, and such because of digital media these days. You know, the, the days of VHS are long and gone. <clears throat> now everything can just be watched at a micro-fucking-second. So you've got, like, eight-year-olds who would watch this and be like, eh, it's not as good as John Carpenter's The Thing. <laughs> and you're very right, little Timmy. Laugh away. Laugh away, Tim Tim. <laughs> yeah. Have yourself some Spam and a soda. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I, I, I mean it. Like, I was kind of into the movie, and the big CGI monster comes out of the corn. And it's Vin Diesel saying, I am fucking Groot. And you lost me. Like, my, my eyes just started to wander off the TV. So, um... What is it really to goddamn say? Besides... A little bit of a swing and a miss. You know, this is not the worst film in the world. It is damn uh, far from the worst in this fucking series. But this movie actually could have been pretty good. And instead, it's okay. <laughs> this is what we're dealing with when you watch Children of the Corn, folks. The best the best goddamn scenario that you can get into your little goddamn brain case is this film is okay. And you know what? Okay is just fine. And just fine is okay. <laughs> Children of the goddamn corn, folks. Yeah. You know, you can, you can go blindfold. This is my challenge to you. Anyone who's listening, 
I want you to do this. It'd be fucking fantastic. I want you to cover your eyes, you know, um, after you have pulled up on Google the Children of the Corn movies. Just put it in Google, and then, you know, they'll give you the list. I want you to just cover your eyes and then pick one. Watch it. Leave a comment <laughs> down below. What was your experience? Did you get one of the worst ones? You get one of the ones where you want to pull your teeth out? Or did you get something like this? And you can go, actually, that wasn't a bad afternoon. And that's really what I have to say about the remake of Children of the Corn. It's not a bad afternoon. Three tiny top hats out of five. Yes. Yes, that CGI monster could have really pushed it to two, but they didn't show it a lot. You know, it's mainly at the end. It's bad, but it's mainly at the end. Two tiny top hats out of five. So we had absolute garbage and just okay. Man, oh man, I love watching this series. It's my favorite. <laughs> you know what? It's better than Amityville. Someone can quote me on that if you'd like to. You know? You can take any Children of the Corn movie, even the really bad ones, even fucking Genesis, of all things. And you can say, quote the captain. It's not Amityville. <laughs> Well, last thoughts here is please keep an eye out for my new Strange Brew reviews. It will be the Halloween episode. Um, we've got uh, new playlists being made all the time. I do two to three videos every week. So keep an eye out and ear out a leg or two. I'm the captain, and thank you for joining me on this little ride. Now, get the fuck off my train. Heheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheh